Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Grant Tange. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany, and we follow the three wise men as they follow the light towards Bethlehem, the light towards Christ, who is our light. We know that God has sent us this light and we know that we are called to follow it. But we also know that we do not always follow the light of Christ in our lives. We do not always keep Christ with us in our hearts, our minds, our families, in our places of work. And so we come now to the table of the Lord to let that light shine upon us but also to ask forgiveness for the times that we haven't always followed the light. We were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Now let us raise our hearts as we sing in glory to God. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall walk by your light, and kings in the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes round about, and see. They all gather together, they came to you. Your son shall come from far, and your daughter shall be carried in the arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice. Because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim 
the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All nations on earth shall first fall prostrate before you, O Lord. All nations on earth shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. O God, give your judgment to the king, to a king's son your justice, that he may judge your people in justice and your poor in right judgment. All nations on earth shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. In his days shall justice flourish, and great peace till the moon is no more. He shall rule from the sea to sea, from the river to the bounds of the earth. All nations shall, earth shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. The kings of Tarshish and the islands shall pay him tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring him gifts. Before him all kings shall fall prostrate. All nations will serve him. All nations on earth shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. For he shall save the needy when they cry, the poor and those who are helpless. He will have pity on the weak and the needy and save the lives of the needy. All nations on earth shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I assume that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is how the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king. Behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people, Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star appeared, and he sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go, and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. When they had heard the king, they went their way, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I know that we have just finished celebrating the Christmas season and that we are beginning to finalize our New Year's resolutions. And perhaps we've even started to put them into practice. But for today's feast, our minds are cast back to the story of Jesus' birth, to the time when the three ma magi, or three wise men, came to pay homage to him by giving gifts. So of course, as Christians, this is one of the reasons we give gifts during Christmas. We are reenacting the giving of gifts by these three wise men who came to visit Jesus. And they brought special gifts for him. We know that at Christmas time or at birthdays, a gift becomes great when a person takes time and effort to think about the person they're giving the gift to and buys something that would honor him or her, something precious that pays tribute to that person in a special way. A gift wisely bought is a symbol of love between two people. So what did the Magi give for Jesus? What did they give to him? Their gifts also sought to pay tribute to Jesus in a unique way. They brought him gold, a gift fit for a king. And this is who Jesus is, our king. They brought him incense, and this could symbolize incense in a temple, which is used to give praise to a God. And this is who Jesus is. He is mighty God and Prince of Peace. They brought him myrrh. And this has a touch of sadness to it. And perhaps we might not like to consider this as a gift when we consider the meaning of it. Myrrh was used as an embalming ointment to prepare the body for burial. With reference to Jesus, we can say that this was a gift to honor his future sacrifice on the cross. Jesus was to die for us. So with these unique gifts, the three magi were honoring who Jesus is. And with our feast today, we are also remembering Jesus, who is God, who is King, and who will give his life for the salvation of the world. As the lyrics of the Christmas hymn, We Three Kings says, Glorious now behold him arise, God and King and sacrifice. But even though the story of the Magi honors who Jesus is with their gifts to him, the good news of this story extends further than this. Their, their honors, the gift of Jesus to us, they honor that gift to the whole world the gift of Jesus to us. So in the first reading from Isaiah, we read those wonderful words, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. At Christmas time, we celebrated that. Although the world was covered in darkness, Jesus, our light, has come to us. And this theme comes out again in this text from the end of the book of Isaiah. However, there is a different emphasis in the text for today's feast. We read that the nations shall walk by the light of God and kings in the brightness of its radiance. And they all gather together. They come to the light drawn from afar. And at the end of the reading, we see a reference to camels drawing near with gold and frankincense. Here we see an emphasis being placed on the universal call of Jesus. As Christians, we can read Isaiah and realize that light of Jesus will be attractive to all the nations of the world. This universal emphasis comes out beautifully in the last line about camels and gifts. We can now read this last line in the context of our gospel reading today from Matthew. Because the Magi approached Bethlehem from the east, from a distant place, probably on camels. They bring gifts of gold and frankincense. As Christians, there is a definite link between the coming of the Magi to Bethlehem, to Jesus, and what Isaiah is saying about the light of God. The Magi are coming to the light of God. They are coming to Jesus, and they represent all the nations of the world, drawn to Jesus like Isaiah said they would be. 
The Magi are not from the Jewish people. We know this because they did not know the prophecies about where the Messiah was to be born. The chief priests and the scribes, the wise men of the Jewish people, knew exactly where the prophecies say that he would be born. But the Magi followed a star to the king of the Jews. In other words, the Magi were Gentiles who were coming to Jesus not knowing the Jewish scriptures. Not only does this echo the theme in Isaiah for today, but it echoes the end of the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus instructs his disciples to go out and to proclaim his message, to shine his light on all the nations of the world, making them disciples. There are two reasons why this can be good news for us today. Firstly, if the light of Jesus is meant for everyone, if Jesus is God's gift to us all, then it means that no matter where you are, the message of Jesus is for you. A gift should not be discarded because of the wrapping it comes in. Perhaps we find ourselves in situations where we think the Christian message is not for us because of the way the message has been communicated. Perhaps the message of Jesus was wrapped in ways that made it seem like a message just for religious people, a message that has no relevance for real-world problems like depression or problems in marriage or for people who are struggling with addictions, for example. If the light of Jesus was meant for the whole world, it was certainly meant to respond to a desperate longing in people for freedom, for peace and harmony in union with another person in marriage, and a longing for light if we find ourselves in dark places. No matter what our path is in life, the radiance of Jesus should be able to find a home in our hearts. In sending Jesus to us, God was extending his whole arms, his arms over the whole world, to embrace whoever he could gather to himself. The second reason why the message for today is good news is that the message is calling the church community to be a place of welcome. Even if we find ourselves on the margins of the community, the light of Jesus is meant for everyone, not just a select few. This gives the church a special challenge, especially in the context of the Synod on Synodality. Pope Francis has started the preparatory period for this synod, which is to take place in Rome in 2023. We are encouraged at the moment with the local preparatory sessions, which are taking place at the diocesan level of our church. Across the world, we are holding listening groups with a view, with a view to trying to learn how the church is listening and engaging with all of its members. As Pope Francis has said, synodality is a constitutive element in the church, which means that a church is only a church to the extent that it walks together as one group, discerning together the call of Christ to us all as we journey towards union with God. If this synod is to succeed, we will need to determine how best to communicate the light of Jesus to every person in our community. In other words, our community is being called to form itself into a place of welcome where we all get to feel at home. Perhaps we do not need to wait for the end of this process to start being that welcoming church. We could take this opportunity to ask ourselves, how does each one of us welcome others in our hearts, in our minds, and in our community? How does each one of us transmit the light of Jesus in our families, in our schools, in our places of work? Are we doing it in a way that masks the beauty of the gift who is Jesus? Or are we shining the light of Jesus boldly to everyone we meet, regardless of who it is that we meet? If the answer to these questions tells us that we are blocking the light of Christ from shining out to the four corners of the world, perhaps we could meditate on our readings for today. As Isaiah says to us, lift up your eyes round about. And see, they are all gathered together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried in the arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. Let us pray today that the abundance of Christ's light may fill our hearts and minds, and that this abundance may overflow 
to reach all those around us. Let us say our creed together as we proclaim our faith in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Conscious that God calls us to trust in him, relying on him to nurture and care for all of us, let us come to him in confident prayer. We pray for this preparatory phase for the Synod on Synodality. May the Holy Spirit assist the Church to know how best to listen to all those in our community. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the gift of evangelization. May God help all of us to share the gift of Christ to everyone we meet. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. We pray for our families, our schools, and places of work. May these spaces become places of welcome, showing to all the light of Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who are suffering and find themselves in despair. May they find the Christ who embraces them and who will draw them to the freedom and life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving Father, you gave us the gift of your Son as a light to all the nations. We thank you for your gift and ask you to respond out of that same love to our humble requests to you today. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. This is the Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for I believe in the form of God's church. Look with favour, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, 
in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord of our hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, gracious to make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm, in faith and charity, your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bhutia, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am worthy that you should enter under my roof, that I may say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, when you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection 
the mystery in which you have willed us to participate. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for today's Eucharist and have a blessed feast today. Today, for the Feast of the Epiphany, the Church gives us a solemn blessing. So please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. Amen. And since <clears throat> in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.